Hello ladies and gentlemen, it is Roman, the true football fan, back once again with my 2014-2015 NFL season previews, sticking with the NFC, AFC North, excuse me, the Cleveland Browns. But before I get into that, I just want to thank you guys for watching my videos. My views have gone up a lot recently. I've grabbed a few more subscribers. I'm getting a few shares of the video, and I'm really liking what I'm seeing. My channel is growing very little, but by the second, but I enjoy seeing your comments. Um, Make sure you keep it civilized. Make sure you keep it adult, mature. I will, I'm a very friendly person. I'll reply. We can talk about football. I love talking about football, and I want to hear your guys' opinions. And if you guys have seen the comments before, I've replied to pretty much everyone that I can. So, and I think I'm getting a new name change. It just depends. I'm really thinking about it. If I get up there and subscribers and more, become more popular and become a bigger face amongst the YouTube community, community talking about football. Uh, the name change will probably happen, but until then, I'm sticking with the true football fan, but we will see. I have my sights set on some big things here. So, Cleveland Browns, 2014, excuse me, 2013, they finished 4-12, and fourth in the AFC North, dead last. Pretty much used to that from the Cleveland Browns the past few seasons, but going ahead and starting with the offense. The offense finished 11th in pass yards this last season with 252.9 pass yards per game. Now, these are not bad numbers that from the Browns, offensively passing the ball. Usually we expect the Browns to be in the bottom half of the league, but they're really not. I really like seeing Cleveland at 11 here. I think they're happy with that. I think they would obviously like to be in the top 10, obviously like to be in the top five, but being at number 11 is excellent. They ran with Brian Hoyer last season, Jason Campbell, Brandon Whedon for a game or two, and the quarterbacks were all over the place. But when Jason Campbell played and Brian Hoyer played, um, it just kind of surprised me. It took me by surprise. I was like, wow, this team is really succeeding. And a lot has to do with Josh Gordon. I'll get into Josh Gordon a little bit later when I talk about you know def offensive positioning. But moving on to rushing for the Cleveland Browns, this was a huge weak point for this team throughout the entire season. That was rushing. 27th in rushing, bottom half of the league, towards the bottom of the barrel, at 86.4 rush yards per game. This is not good at all to have for the Cleveland Browns. The Cleveland Browns have not had... A runner that can truck play uh, defensive players that's super speedy in a very long time. And this season, you don't really see it either. They've got a lot of future uh, players that can exceed very well in the future. But right now, I really don't think this team is going anywhere in the rushing game this coming season. But 27th in rushing, 86 overall, they obviously want to get that up. When they had Trent Richardson there, their numbers were actually not that bad. But they went ahead and traded him to Indianapolis anyways, which was a huge mistake because Trent Richardson obviously isn't succeeding over there in Indianapolis. But 27th in rushing, they obviously want to get that up. It can. It very well can. It could be proven wrong. Depends on how the offensive line plays, opens up holes, and you know the draws, draw plays work out, and Everything. If everything works well for this offensive line and it all comes down to that, then the running game can succeed. Now, recently in the offseason, this past offseason, they hired offensive coordinator Kyle Shanahan, formerly who was the offensive coordinator for the Washington Redskins for three seasons. Now, I kind of like this because Kyle Shanahan, what he did with RG3 in his first season was he made RG3, in my humble opinion, a top 10 quarterback easily. I mean, he won rookie of the year with Shanahan there. Now, it wasn't all Shanahan, but he's still the offensive coordinator. He still knows, you know, how to have a great running game. And I really like this. So could it go up? Absolutely. This running game is key. If they can keep to the passing game and the receivers can stay out of offseason issues um, or off the field issues, then I think this Kyle Shanahan pickup for offensive coordinator is going to be huge, especially for running backs, Ben Tate and uh, rookie pickup Terrence West. Now, Ben Tate, we've seen him run before with Houston. And when he would play for Houston when Arian Foster went out with injury, Ben Tate, he surprised a little bit of people. He performed very well in the red zone. He didn't break out for those 50-yard runs, those 60-yard runs. But he had some games where he'd break out some big runs and get the opponent into scoring position. I mean, the, their team, the Houston Texans, into scoring position. So... Ben Tate, I really like this pickup. It might be just what they need. They've always kind of been with this big running back that can truck players. Now, for a long, we haven't seen a great Browns running back in a very long time. I couldn't even recall a top 10 running back for the Browns in a very long time. So this Kyle Shanahan pickup, when he worked with Alfred Morris, he made him a top 10 running back. Can he make Ben Tate 
a top 10 running back? Absolutely. But it all comes down to Terrence West because his stock is going up and he's really catching people by surprise here. And a lot of people really like him to succeed this season. If you know who Terrence West is, he's running back out of Towson College. And he was picked 94th overall in the draft. So obviously he's up there high on people's draft boards. And But Cleveland goes in and grabs him because they know they need a running back and they believe in this kid. And they're putting a lot into this kid to give him the second spot on the depth chart. And could he perform? Absolutely. I hope he can. I really like seeing players succeed, especially rookies and younger players who people, you know, overlook. And just like a Russell Wilson, he was drafted in the third round. Terrence West, West drafted later. So with Kyle Shanahan there, I think this running game could be a lot better. I don't know. It's going to be interesting. It all depend, depends on how the offensive line plays. And speaking of the offensive line, left tackle. Easily one of the best offensive linemen in the game, Joe Thomas. Absolute star. He's the star of this offensive line. Absolutely love watching him play. He's so good at defending the quarterback. I absolutely love Joe Thomas. Moving on to the left guard position, you've got John Greco, another name that's been there for a while. And I really like John Greco. They've done a pretty solid job of protecting the quarterback, but they can't really open up holes for the running back, clearly, as we've seen. Center Alex Mack, one of the best in the business. I love watching Alex Mack. He never really makes mistakes. He's a great center to have, and the Browns have had him for a while. Now, at right guard, they're mixing up a little bit. They're having rookie out of Nevada, Joel Batonio. He was picked 35th overall in the draft in the second round, so he's a second-round pick. They need an offensive lineman on the right-hand side of the uh, the the line so right guard Joel Batonio they're putting a lot into this kid they're giving him a lot of pressure they're going to need him to open up holes for the running back they're going to need him to protect the quarterback Brian Hoyer or Johnny Manziel depending on how it pans out in training camp or in preseason and then we move on to right tackle we got Mitchell Schwartz not a huge name not a lot of people know this guy but he's got to come to play he's got to come to play and make sure that the quarterback and running back stay healthy and they open up holes and protect the quarterback. So this offensive line, it's not that bad. Three out of the five players on the offensive line, unless they have a tight end, uh, Jordan Cameron defending, um, three of these five players on the offensive line are very, very good. I really like them. Um, Alex Mack and Joe Thomas, the two that really stand out the most. But I'm really excited to see what they do this season, protecting the running backs, protecting the quarterbacks, opening up holes. Moving on to fullbacks, I've got Chris Ogbenaya. He actually ran running back for the Browns last season um, for a few downs. Like He was here on a few plays, a few drives, a few series. He was here and there. But now he's at the fullback position, and I really like this. I really don't want to touch on fullbacks too much because they're very important, but they're not as important as a lot of the other issues that the Browns have going on right now in the offense. But Chris Agman, I really like him at the fullback position. He can run. He's a big guy. I'm really excited to see him play. Moving on to the wide receiver position. In the offseason, they picked up wide receivers Miles Austin, Nate Burleson, and Andrew Hawkins. Now, Josh Gordon is a number one receiver. He's it's probably a 90% chance he's going to be suspended the entire year for breaking the law again. Now, it's disappointing. This guy was picked up in the supplemental draft. He was the last pick that's ever been, the last person that's ever been picked in a supplemental draft for a few years now. So Josh Gordon, great player. He was number one, stats-wise, stats-wise, he was number one receiver in the NFL last season. Just putting up num- ridiculous numbers. He's so fast. He he jumps up and catches the ball. He's got great hands. I love watching Josh Gordon play. And it's going to be disappointing to see him be suspended. It's inevitable. It's going to happen. Don't say it isn't going to happen. And they're preparing for life without him already. And that's disappointing. This Browns team needs to succeed now. They bring in Johnny Manziel, a huge star, and they're another, their biggest star on the team, on the entire team, offense and defense alike. Josh Gordon is going to be suspended, and it's disappointing. I love watching him play. So with Josh Gordon stepping out, or by some miracle he stays in, but let's just say he's going out. Miles Austin then takes over the number one spot. Nate Burleson takes over the number two wide receiver spot, and Andrew Hawkins takes over the slot receiver spot, which he's always been used to. He was, if you don't know who Andrew Hawkins is, I actually really like the guy. I've paid a lot of attention to him. I think he's going to be one of the next big slot, slot receivers in the game. He was over in Cincinnati for a while, their rival, so... Miles Austin is going to move to one, Nate Burleson to two. He was with Detroit. Miles Austin was with Dallas. He's had some issues with injury. Nate Burleson as well. He broke his arm in a car accident last season. And Andrew Hawkins is going to move on to the slot receiver because Josh Gordon is inevitable. He's going to be suspended for the entire year. 
But I really kind of like this wide receiver core as long as they can stay healthy. Now, these aren't the big stars. These have been number two receivers almost all their career. And Andrew Hawkins is still young. He's always been known as the slot receiver for Cincinnati. But all of them have also been dealing with injuries. Injuries have plagued these guys. And if they can stay healthy, I really think Brian Hoyer or Johnny Manziel can succeed, whoever starts. But we'll get to quarterbacks here in a second. At tight end, you got Jordan Cameron. Easily proved he's one of the top five tight ends last season. Stats-wise, he really showed up in the red zone. He really showed up for a 20-yard gain or a 30-yard gain, and he was the second-best pass catcher on that team last season. So with Josh Gordon gone, Jordan Cameron can likely see a lot more reception. So if you're big on fantasy, just like me, go ahead and target Jordan Cameron. I really like Jordan Cameron this season, especially with Brian Hoyer and Johnny Manziel. Moving on to quarterbacks, finally. Brian Hoyer or Johnny Manziel, who's gonna start? It all comes down to training, cr- training cramp. Excuse me, training camp. Johnny Manziel, he's obviously had a lot of off season, off the field issues. I mean, we all know that. But I don't think they're off the field issues. People are just making them out to be off field issues. Rolling up twenty dollar bills and partying. He's twenty one years old. He's twenty twenty two years old. It's going to happen. He's, he was there with Rob Gronkowski. So why aren't people attacking Rob Gronkowski as well for also being out and partying? They're just making out Johnny Manziel to be this really bad person because no one really liked him in Texas A&M. But in all truth, everyone loved watching him play. He's a great playmaker. He makes huge plays. I, I loved watching him play for Texas A&M. I wish he stayed one more year. But... Johnny Manziel, if he starts, this team can do a lot of things. He can run, he can pass, but is could he be the next Tim Tebow? Very likely. It's very likely. He, you could be a great college quarterback, but a terrible NFL quarterback, just like Tim Tebow was. He was one of the greatest college players of all time, no doubt about it. No one can deny that. But Johnny Manziel is very likely in that same situation. But a lot of people are painting a picture as to Johnny Manziel is this terrible player and he doesn't need to start and doesn't need to be in the NFL. No, that's wrong. He's very capable of starting, but I think the starting job is going to go to Brian Hoyer. He has experience. He played pretty well when he was playing last season. He came in for about two to three games. He was injured on Thursday night football against the Bills, and he was the reason Josh Gordon started picking up more receptions, more touchdowns, more receiving yards, and that's what really took Josh Gordon off. As soon as Brian Hoyer came in, he really made Josh Gordon a premier receiver in the NFL, no doubt about it. We all knew he was pretty good, but Hoyer made him really good. So I'm really, I really think he's going to start. He's older, he's wiser, he understands the game, and I think he's it's going to be huge for this offense, especially with receivers that are not very healthy. And if he can keep them healthy and he can target them well and give them passes downfield across the middle... It's, it's going to be very interesting. I don't think Manziel's going to start week one. I think Hoyer's going to start week one. It could I could change my mind. I we could see different in training camp. Training camp started today. I mean, uh, yes, Friday, today. So Buffalo Bills are starting, and then pretty soon the teams will start rolling on out with training camp. And I'm going to be very excited watching a lot of NFL Network to keep updated on everything football instead of ESPN talking about LeBron James's jersey number changing. So... I'm really excited to see this offense play. I think they can succeed. 11th in passing, that's not that bad. But rushing, they finished 27th with 86.4 yards per game, and that's not very good, and they're going to want that to be boosted up. With Kyle Shanahan uh, as their offensive coordinator, it can like it can very likely change. And I'm really excited to see the Browns, Browns play this season. I really have my eye on them. This could be a team that could make the playoffs in two to three years' time. Moving on to defense, opponent pass yards per game allowed. You can't doubt the Browns have one of the best secondaries in the NFL. They're eighth with 221.1 opponent passing yards allowed per game. Great numbers for a team that people absolutely hate. And they added some very good talent to this team. Very, very, very good talent. I'm very excited to see this Browns entire team play this season. So let's go ahead and talk about their opponent rushing yards allowed per game. Bottom half of the league. 18th overall, 111.3 yards allowed per game. Now, they're not known for their defensive line, but they're known for their linebackers and their safeties, which is where they succeed most. So let's go ahead and get into their defense. And They run a base 4-3-4 defense. Jim O'Neill is their defensive coordinator, and he was the defensive coordinator for the Jets last season and the Bills a few seasons ago. So he obviously knows the AFC East, but this is the AFC North now. And... 
The Jets' defense last season was actually pretty good. I really liked the Jets' defense last season. I think they succeeded very well, and he made Sheldon Richardson a star and got him Defensive Rookie of the Year award. So I'm very excited to see how Jim O'Neill works this defense. They've got a base 3-4 defense. On the left defensive end, they've got Atiba Rubin. I'm probably botching that. Nose tackle, they've got Phillip Taylor, and right defensive end, Desmond Bryant. Des Desmond Bryant is the only name that pops out to me. I think... If this, this line needs to obviously play very well, they finish in the bottom half of the league, and opponent rush yards allowed per game, and if they can fix that, this defense could be a potential top 12 defense in the NFL. There's no doubt about it. So let's go ahead and talk about the linebackers. There's some big names here. Paul Kruger, left outside linebacker, one of the best in the business. I love watching Paul Kruger play. They picked him up in the offseason last season, and he showed up this season for sure. Left inside linebacker, I believe, is Chris Robertson. Not a huge name, but he's going to need to show up for the Browns. Right inside linebacker, one of my favorite linebackers in the game, and that is Carlos Dansby. I love watching Carlos Dansby play, and this is a huge pickup for them. Carlos Dansby is an excellent playmaker at the linebacker position. He's very physical, he's very fast, and he hits hard. He hits very, very hard. I'm really excited to see Carlos Dansby integrated into this very physical defense that's already been made out at this linebacker core because we've seen it the past few seasons. Moving on to right off uh, outside linebacker, we've got Jabal Sheard. Not a huge name at all. No one really knows this guy. But just like Robertson, he's going to need to show up for the Browns. Moving on to number one cornerback position, my number three cornerback in the NFL, that's Joe Hayden. Joe Hayden is a freaking star. I don't care what anyone says. He's a youngster. There's no doubt about it. But Joe Hayden is a playmaker. Playmaker. I love watching Joe Hayden play. Joe Hayden is easily one of my favorite players in the NFL. And he's just, he's very smart. He understands the game a lot. Now, he's had a few off the field issues here and there, but Joe Hayden the, guy, the guy's got a lot of talent. I love watching this guy play. He's been in the league for a few years now. He really he succeeds very well in press coverage, man to man. He had, he doesn't really blow a lot of coverages. He doesn't let the receiver get too wide open. Here and there, it happens to every corner. There's no doubt about it. But I really like Joe Hayden. I think he's the face of this franchise right now until Josh Gordon returns. Moving on to strong safety, they picked up one of the best strong safeties in the NFL, and that's Dante Whitner. Also known as Dante Hittner, if this whole name change goes through. But Dante Whitner, man, this guy hits hard. I mean, that's why he changed the name is to Hittner. I loved watching him play in San Francisco. He's an excellent safety. I'm really excited to see what they bring. Um, to the, really excited to see what he brings to this defense. Now that they lost TJ Ward to Denver, to see Hittner come to the Cleveland is a great replacement. They're very similar. I like TJ Ward a lot. I like Dante Whitner a lot. They're very similar players, but Whitner is a star. I'm really excited to see him play. Moving on to free safety, you got Tashawn Gibson, not a big name. Free safety, you're going to have to show up and not blow coverages, plain and simple. Moving on to right, the second cornerback on the opposite end of the field of Joe Hayden is Justin Gilbert. Justin Gilbert, he's, I predicted him to go in the top 10. Did I predict him to go to Cleveland? No, and this is an excellent pickup. Cleveland did so well here because they could have gone so many directions. They could have grabbed Cleveland at, I mean, not Cleveland, they could have grabbed Manzella. They could have grabbed Anthony Barr. They could have grabbed a whole bunch of players. They could have grabbed someone else. But they went with easily one of the best playmakers coming into the draft. One of the best rookies that I've ever seen play. I love Justin Gilbert. I love Oklahoma State University. And Justin Gilbert, playmaker. I'm really excited to see him play. Now he's only a rookie and rookie corners don't tend to succeed at the highest level that we kind of expect them to. Now, Morris Claiborne, who came in and played for Dallas a few seasons ago, he had a few good games, and that's what I expect out of Gilbert. But Gilbert is a lot better than Claiborne was a few seasons ago. So Gilbert, I think he's going to be a star for this team. This was an excellent pickup. They're cl clearly focused on defense. They're not too worried about offense. That's why they grabbed Manziel and West later in the in the later in the draft. So Justin Gilbert, I'm really excited to see him play. Moving on from defense, we're going to go ahead and go to additions. Now what kind of worries me is Mike Patin uh, or Mike Patton, excuse me, uh, head coach. He's their new head coach and Cleveland always makes this mistake. What they do is, is they bring in a coach for one season and then they kick him out the next season if it's a terrible season. You can't do that. You absolutely can't do that. Now, Cleveland, like, they have this mentality of they're going to go to the playoffs next season. 
it's not going to be possible in the first season that you have a new head coach all the time and players getting injured and players having off the field issues. It's just not going to happen. But head coach Mike Patton, could he turn this team around? I don't know. It, co- it all comes down to the players. It all comes down to the offensive coordinators and defensive coordinators. It all comes down to playing. If they kick out Mike Patton for going 6-10 and 10 or 5-11, and 11, that's a mistake on the Cleveland Browns GM. Offensive coordinator Shanahan, Kyle Shanahan, defensive coordinator Jim O'Neill, the grab kicker Billy Cundiff, he's on and off. Running back Ben Tate, talked about that. They signed wide receiver Andrew Hawkins to a four-year deal. Wide receiver Nate Burleson, I think is a great second receiver to have if he stays healthy and he plays at a consistent level. Wide receiver Miles Austin, he's got to stay healthy. He's the number one guy in Cleveland right now, so he's going to have to come up big for them. Cornerback Joe Hayden was signed to a five-year extension deal. Great deal. Joe Hayden's the face of that franchise until uh, uh, excuse me, Josh Gordon returns. It's really late. Excuse me. What they lost in the offseason was linebacker to Quell Jackson, but they went ahead and, well, they replaced him with Carlos Dansby. Carlos Dansby is a great linebacker to have. I really like watching him play. But losing to Quell Jackson, it's obviously replaced by Carlos Dansby, one of my favorite linebackers in the game today. Wide receiver Devon Best, gone. Miles Austin replaces him. Wide receiver Greg Little, gone. Nate Burleson and Andrew Hawkins replace him. Everything's made up for. But linebacker Quentin Groves, one of the better linebackers in the game, he was also shipped out. But I think they'll be okay. I really like what they got here. Paul Kruger's great and Carlos Dansby's great. Moving on to the schedule for the Cleveland Browns. What do I predict are going to go this season? Are they going to make the playoffs? No. But go, let's go ahead and get in. Let's go ahead and get into it. Week one and week two. Week two they have a tough matchup, but week one they go at Pittsburgh. That's a loss here. They can never win in Pittsburgh for some reason. It could change this season. It could absolutely change, but they never win in Pittsburgh. So that's a loss there. Week two they're against the Saints. The Saints are way too dominant. I really like the Saints this season. Um, so they're going to take a loss there. Week three, they're going to go ahead and beat the Ravens in Cleveland. And then they're going to go ahead and get into week four bye week, the first bye week of the season. It's very, very early in the season, which kind of worries me in case injuries come along later in the season. If they're trying to make an eventual playoff push, which is a complete possibility for this team. So early bye week, it could help them. It could. I don't think it will at all. Um, week five, they're at the Titans. I think they beat the Titans here. That's going to be a good game. I'm looking forward to that. Week seven, they're at home against the Steelers. Cleveland always beats Pittsburgh and Cleveland. It, it's I love watching Cleveland and Pittsburgh play. They're a lot closer games than you think. Week seven, they go at Jacksonville. I think they squeak out a win there in Jacksonville. Week eight, they play the Raiders. I mean, excuse me. I think I, they lose to the Jacksonville in uh Jacksonville. So that's a loss in week seven. They're sitting at a three and three record through seven weeks. Week eight, they go at home in Oakland. I mean, at home in Cleveland playing Oakland, and that's a win there in week eight. Week nine, they play the Bucks. That's a loss. I think they're going to lose to the Bucks there. Week 10, they're at Cincinnati. This is a loss here. They always lose in Cincy. Week 11, they play the Texans. I think they squeak out a win there. That's going to be a very good game. Week 12, they're at Atlanta. Atlanta is much too dominant in the Georgia Dome. There's no way they'll win there. Week 13, they're at the Bills. I think they went get a win there. Mike Pettin is returning against his old team. Um, week 14, Colts in Cleveland. Colts are much. Colts are one of the best teams in the NFL heading into the season. There's no way they'll win that game. Week 15, they're against the Bengals. And the Bengals and uh, Browns always split, so I'm really excited to see them play. Could eventually mean a playoff spot is secured. Could eventually mean they get a wild card spot. We don't know. Week 16, they're at the Panthers. That's a loss there. I think Carolina's going to edge them out there. And the week 17, they're at the Ravens. They can never win in Baltimore for some reason. They're not a very good away team. But that puts their season record at 7-9 and nine and a division record of 3-3. Three and three. I think they're going to just miss the playoffs. This team has improved a lot. And if their players stay healthy and their coaches coach well and their GM doesn't kick out uh, Mike Patton or any other head players or anything, anything at all. I think this team can do very, very well in the 2015-2016 season. I really got my eye on them. I'm really excited to see what they can bring to the table. So that's 7-9, and 3-3. Three and three. I'm excited for the Browns this season. I kind of hope Johnny Manziel starts, but I think Brian Hoyer is going to edge him out due to uh, veteran experience. But 
I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I probably talked a little bit fast here and there. I'm extremely tired. My mouth is a little dry. That's all changed now. But if you guys like this video, go ahead and hit that like button. Turn that gray like button a shiny bright green. And if you dislike this video, go ahead and hit that dislike button. That is your opinion, not mine. I cannot tell you what you can and can't do. And if you love what you're getting from my channel, I've got a playlist of the NFC North. I've got a playlist of the AFC North. I'm going to be finishing up here right after I make the Cleveland Browns video, heading on to the Cincinnati Bengals. So go ahead and check out the playlist. Want to pop in some headphones, relax, lay down, and listen to me talk about football. And then type in the comments what you think. Do you think Cleveland is going to go 7-9? and nine? I personally think so. Do you think they're going to make the playoffs this season? I think they can make him next season. Do you think who's going to start? Hoyer or Manziel? Can they survive without Josh Gordon at the receiver position? How's their running game going to do? There's so many questions surrounding this team. And then go ahead and share this video. A lot of you have been sharing this video. I want you guys to get the word around about me doing this for you guys, for your entertainment, not for mine. I stay up late just to do this for you guys because it's the only time I have to do it. And I put a lot of passion to this. I put a lot of work. If I could show you, I would. But uh, it would look kind of weird. But um, I think new new things are coming here. I'm getting a few subscribers here and there. More likes, uh, more comments. A lot more people are watching my videos. My Chicago Bears has 100 views now. My Vikings is just shy of 100 views. So I'm getting up there. I'm a youngster in the YouTube community. I think I can get there eventually. But it all comes down to you guys. If you guys go ahead and share this video, tell all your friends about it, that would be absolutely great. But like I said... It's your life. I can't tell you what you can and can't do. This is Roman, true football fan. Have a great day.